Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia. Uh, summary for the day of 42. Day 42 of this uh, Russo Ukrainian conflict uh, is the 6th of April. So, um, it's not very ev uh, eventful. So I, th I, so, I think it's going to be quite fast. Uh, a lot of missile strikes on Kharkiv, um, a lot of artillery strikes on Izium. Uh, fighting is still at uh, Selikivka. So apparently this is actually a stronghold of the Ukrainians. It's actually a stronghold. Uh, so which is why it's taking some time. Uh, so if you have missed the previous uh, summary, uh, Brezkivka also took actually a few days to capture. So and uh, one of the comments actually told me that this is called ravens, not hills or mountains. Okay, so it is ravens. So no. Yeah, ravens. Okay, so moving on to uh, to the Luhansk front. There is no news regarding uh, Crimea. There is no news regarding Rubizne. Uh, regarding the chemical plant explosion, uh, the defense, uh, the Donetsk People's Republic, uh, one of the guy there, uh, said that the Luhansk side told them that it's actually fine. Uh, there, there isn't any uh, uh, disaster coming out from this uh, chemical plant explosion. So that's actually a good news. Of course, uh, it could be the Luhansk people telling the Donetsk people not to worry about, but actually there's a huge hum uh, huge disaster over here. Uh, no idea because uh, people sometimes don't want to save faces, right? So um, several Donetsk, no news. No news, no news. So basically, they are still fighting for several Donetsk, uh, Mitokin as well as uh, Boriske. So moving on to Nizine, there's also no news regarding this fighting there. All these are reported yesterday already. No change. There is some rumors that Popasna has been uh, fully cleared, cleared up, but I haven't seen anything actually. It's just rumors. And um, so that's all for Luhan's front. So coming to Donetsk front, there is also no change there. There's actually heavy fighting reported at uh, Adivska. And uh, I think there's one more. I can't remember where. So there's actually heavy fighting. Uh, and then uh, the latest report coming out uh, for the day of, the, I mean, the morning report for the 7th, which is the two days, say, uh, the Russians say they have uh, fully captured Slavne. I have no idea what that what is that supposed to mean, because they supposedly they have already captured it, mm, or maybe it means they have cleared out these two entrenched positions. So, um, no idea what that's supposed to mean. <clears throat> so I'm gonna just I'm not gonna update because this is yesterday's uh, summary, not for today. But I'm just telling you uh, I saw that information. No news regarding uh novel uh. Velika Novasilka as well as uh, Blahodatne, which is also called uh, Octavia. So moving on to... So there's nothing on the Zaporizhia line. Mariupol, uh, the... I forgot who said. I think it's the Donetsk, Donetsk side. One of the... One of those leaders. Not... I'm not fully sure who. I I, I, I don't really recognize that name. Anyway, they say that the center of Mariupol has been cleared. Now they are concentrating their fighting in the port area. So which means that uh that corroborates my my mapping that the central area has been fully captured by the Russian forces or the Donetsk forces or Chechens. You know, we we to make it simple, we just call them Russian forces. And uh, now they are concentrating their effort on the port area. They are trying to clear this out. I think before they try they move on to this area. So the the there is some interesting mapping out there that uh they wrote Ulich metal plant as of now as the port area is the remaining uh remaining pockets of Ukrainian forces. However, they blanked out this entire area as Russian held, and then they actually uh, put this area as Illich. Uh, from my understanding, this is not Illich. Illich is actually this. This is Illich. 
So despite the map didn't say this, uh, I have a Mariupol map that actually guides me that this is actually Illich. Uh, I can actually show you. Let me see. Let's cannot show you my secrets. Okay, so you can see this is Illich Steel and Iron Works. Illich Steel and Iron Works. Illich Steel and Iron Works. Is entire this area you can see this is actually the river so this is the residential area that is i i noted did as still uncaptured this it, that's this area so this entire giant construction industrial area this is called illich steel and iron works including a small part around here so then this is as of style which is the smaller one so if you refer it to the map this entire area is illich is it Illich and then as well as uh, this small area uh, this this area here and maybe this area here so so that's kind of uh, confusing when I saw some of the mapping when they in the caption they put Illich but then they actually blanked out this area as a uh, Russian hell so uh, that's actually rather confusing for me but uh, which is why I don't reference other people's mapping as much as I can I tried I only use them to to check if I missed out any news. So usually uh, I don't. Uh, usually I missed out on Ukrainian news because Ukrainian information tends to be more harder to find. They are only on Twitter and they are usually very uh, spread out. Uh, so uh, so no news regarding all those uh, supposed alleged um, foreign advisors. So the surprisingly the main action is actually in the Kyrie Ray front and uh, Mikolai front, basically the southern front here. So the Ukrainians make further progress. They captured three villages, uh, Dobryanka, Trudolyubivka, as well as uh, Novovoznesensk. And uh, so this is actually Novovoznesensk. So Novo is new, new Voznesensk. So basically they captured this tree. And uh, this progress uh, in one day around 10 kilometers, this actually shows that there is there is actually Russian forces around here resisting. If not, their capture will be much faster, in my opinion. So uh, there might be some uh, resistance around here. So the in however, when you go to towards the Mikolaev area, uh, this on this part. The Russians actually uh, did a counter-offensive. They are cur currently attacking uh, Snihurivka. Snihurivka, they actually discovered uh, a warehouse full of weapons. Uh, and uh, weapons and ammunition and stuff, stuff like that. Uh, I, I didn't really look uh, read too much into it. Um, but it's, what, it's surprising. So since they captured it, yet they are still attacking. So I wonder they have actually captured the, the town. And uh, it's also interesting that because previously Snihurivka is under Russian control, uh, I think maybe two three weeks ago, and um, they didn't they did not find those warehouse, so they actually find it now. So maybe they are new, mo uh, newly moved in after the Ukrainians captured it. So, so they immediately they, it could be a case where they immediately lost uh, their new supplies that they moved to keep it here. No idea if that's the case. Since uh, no information comes out from Mikolaev uh, easily, seemingly, because the Russians don't report on their stuff, they don't take photo and videos, and then the Ukrainians actually don't, uh, by law, don't allow people to actually take photos. But somehow, uh, there are still news coming out. Uh, there is fighting reported at Bravdine, uh, which, which resulted in me moving the border up to this area to indicate that this actually is under Russian control. So with this attack also seems to corroborate that uh, this region here is actually still under Russian control. Some of the Russian analysts actually uh, question that question if Posad Porovsky is actually even controlled by the Ukrainians at all. They are claiming that maybe that the, the announcement of the capture is actually a fake. But anyway, there's also a fighting at Oleksandrivka. So this is a counter-offensive. Previously, the Ukrainians took Sla uh, Stanislav. Stanislav. 
and uh, they actually also took Alexandrivka and then uh, currently the Russians are trying to retake this town. Uh, if you saw my quick update, I actually mentioned uh, about uh, Haile Sinov, which is also, and uh, the other name is actually called Galit Sinovo. Um, previously, this was used as a staging ground uh, for the Russian forces. They actually launched artillery strikes from here and they actually entrenched themselves using the forest here as as a very good cover and there's actually a heavy industry here the aluminium plant so this is actually a very important plant i read i went to read about it um this is ukraine's uh, attempt to actually break into the aluminium market so this is the only plant of its type if i'm if i didn't read it wrongly in ukraine so they actually so maybe the Russians know that and then by by hiding around here, the Ukrainians don't dare to actually uh, bombard this area. That could be a case. But of course, uh, this information might be wrong as well, so don't trust me. Uh, but I believe the Rus Russians are still holding out there, how, uh, despite there's actually no information uh, about this. Uh, there's also, um, interestingly, the some of the Russian maps actually shows that the Russians actually control these roads this area and they actually kind of surrounds uh Mikolaev in a very 50 kilometers away kind of surrounding and they actually some of the map actually put uh Bashtenka under Russian control however I saw on Twitter just a few days ago there's a Ukrainian uh, activist social activist kind of person uh you can call him a reporter or journalist also can he was in Bashtenka and then it was a uh, clearly Ukrainian control so I don't think that mapping is correct so i think this is a more conservative gauge of where the russians are um there is also just just come back, coming back to um i think mariupol there's a there's a there's a vessel that was uh i'm not sure which vessel i wonder if you can see here there's a naval vessel i think it's this one this naval vessel uh caught fire somehow and i have no idea uh, nobody knows what happened. Some say is the uh, Russians attacked it. Uh, so no news regarding. Not not really sure what happened to it. And what else? The the Ukrainians are still uh saying that the Russians are trying to recruit an army in a uh, Pranestrovian Mondovian Republic. They should reach. They should really change this name. This is a very difficult to pronounce name, or Transnistria. So. So this the activation continues after the, the Belarus one didn't seem to pan out the way they say, making them look like a massive liar. But of course, I, I'm sure they are not lying, right? They're just calling them out. And then the Belarusians like, oh no, they, they found out. So they, they decided not to invade. So maybe they're doing the same thing to Transnistria to protect themselves. And uh, maybe it will work since it worked on the Belarusian, right? So, oh, there's some news from Belarus. Uh, remember the the Ukrainians are pro Ukrainian crowd are very excited about and very proud about the the Belarus uh saboteurs that destroy the railroads to prevent uh, the usage by the Russian forces. Um, the Belarusian spe special forces actually caught them, uh, and arrested them. So that's the end of that episode. They call them terrorists. So once you label them as terrorists, I think uh, that's going to be quite horrible fit lying ahead for them. Uh, what else do I have? Let me think. Mm. And I, I can't remember uh, off my head now uh, what other news I saw. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's one more, this, which is what I want to say. There's also a Russian map, map that shows that the Russians did not leave this border area. They, they actually show that this entire border area uh, between Russia and Ukraine this entire line there's actually still Russian forces uh, holding this entire border region uh, that's in contradiction to the Ukrainian claims that their forces have already reached the border and they have secured the border crossings so uh, no sure, not sure who's telling the truth uh, personally I do not think the Russian forces will be uh, at the border they will probably go into their own border and dare the Ukrainians to attack into russia um so the the reason is this while despite i, I was talking about you know 
if you saw my uh, opinion piece on uh, on the view of what the Ukrainians can do, uh, which is which is no uh, the v main video was talking about you know why the Russians withdraw and what 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 could ha happen in the future, and then I was saying the Ukrainians only hope of winning this war is actually go for Moscow, and and some people actually. I actually in the Discord, DP, the DPA Discord, uh, Defense Politics Asia Discord, uh, someone actually highlighted that, uh, and not really directly, but they say that <clears throat> a a ground invasion into Russia in any way would triggers um, uh, will give actually the permission for Russia to actually uh use cons the conscripts because conscripts can only be used in a defensive war so if the ukrainians invade into russia there's a declaration of war uh or there's an invasion into russia which means the russians can the russians can actually uh, activate the mobilization of conscript to go to war against ukraine so so uh that kind of invalidated the entire uh possibility of ukraine going to moscow uh, there is a few layers to this because the forces committed here is only at max 200,000 at max and um, the Russians have a 1 million strong army uh, that means all the active military personnel is up to 1 million and that's not counting their reserves not counting conscriptions not count counting a mass mobilization in the total war situation so Officially, technically speaking, the Russians are not at war with Ukraine, which is why the Russians keep saying they are not at war with Ukraine. Uh, because if they are at war, they are not going to only use 200,000. They're going to use all their conscripts. They're going to use uh, the large, mar larger force to wipe out Ukraine. While, whilst on Ukraine's side, this is a total war for them. They basically acting like a total war situation because uh, they can't even deal with 200,000 uh, Russian forces. So so this is kind of the difference and for for russia they actually have this uh, defense pact similar to at uh similar to nato uh which is called sisto c c s t o so there is a there's six countries within this uh alliance and it's a defensive this defensive alliance just like nato they have a their own version of article 5 so if a U if the ukrainians invade into russia it will trigger that that uh sisto version of article 5 and belarus can actually invade ukraine directly and you also can see uh, some of the other alliance i think within the alliance i think there's kazakhstan i think and i think there is belarus i can't remember who are the who, let me let me search immediately so um, so this is the wikipedia so the members are actually uh, Armenia, okay, Arma Armenia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Russia, and T Tajikistan. So, so under these circumstances, the these countries can be actually called upon to invade Ukraine. So, um, that will kind of invalidate the entire plan of going for Moscow, and I'm, um, yeah, so so that's that. So I don't think the Russians will actually, you know, put troops within Ukrainian borders so that they can get hit. They will actually stay within Russia and then there the Ukrainians will actually hit them. So that's what I think is happening rather than having this border, a, a region still under Russian control. So this is the summary for the day of 42. Uh, not a lot have happened, um, but I thought that I should do a summary. And uh, I will see you in the next update.